Hi everyone, welcome to the Low Code Development with Autonomous Database Workshop. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. My name is Bo English Richling and I'm a director on the Oracle Application Express team. I'll be your guide and presenter for today's workshop. We also have several panelists behind the scenes that's helping with today's workshop too. I'm really excited to show you how to quickly and easily create and modify an application using Oracle Application Express on Autonomous Database. Here is the agenda. Today we're going to cover the introduction, have you sign up for a free trial, and then you'll get hands-on experience following labs one through three. We'll spend about two hours in today's session covering all the labs, and you may not complete all three exercises today. Don't worry, please work on those exercises at your own pace, and you can ask questions as you go, or we'll hold another one of these sessions next month where you can ask additional questions. If you have any questions, please post those in the Q&A section in Zoom, not in chat, and one of the panelists will answer. Please remember to put all of the information in one question and include the region name, database version, the page and step of the lab guide, and any error message text so we can support you properly. Also, I just want to remind everyone to please read and carefully follow every step in the lab guide, and please don't skim. Each step is required for your labs to work properly. And if your lab is not working, please check to ensure you followed every step before posting a question. This session is going to be recorded so you can review it again, and you'll find the recorded session in the office hours page in the next few days. Before we get started on the labs, we'd like to share a little bit about Autonomous with our first presentation. In this workshop, you'll learn how to create an Apex application on an autonomous transaction processing instance, and you'll use Quick SQL and SQL Developer Web to modify and enhance your Apex application. Let's begin with a quick intro on Autonomous Database. Autonomous Database essentially automates the database and infrastructure management so you don't have to spend time installing, securing, patching, tuning, and backing up the database. But before we even get to the database, there's the infrastructure and preparation of the hardware, installation of the operating system, and many more things that you've got to prepare. And with Autonomous Database, all of this is now automated. Not only does this save you time and money, but it also makes it more secure by removing human error. The journey of Autonomous Database has been an evolution, and Oracle's been improving the database and hardware over time. Oracle spent the last decade working on the database infrastructure with our engineered systems, introducing innovation and automation at the infrastructure level. You've probably heard of Exadata. It's our best performing, most available, and most secure architecture for running Oracle databases. An autonomous database is a combination of all of these evolutions, which includes infrastructure, database, and cloud. And since all of these are highly automated in just a few mouse clicks, you can create and run databases and everything is managed for you by Oracle. When you provision an autonomous database, you get a mission critical database, which includes all of the advanced technologies that we previously mentioned. You get Exadata, the operating system is created for you, the database is automatically created, and it includes Active Data Guard, which creates a copy of your database in another region, so you can recover in the event of a failure. So running an Apex application on Autonomous isn't just about saving time. It's an upgrade to mission-critical database features that we previously used to only find in large enterprises. But now, everyone has access to all of these innovative features. Now let's talk about security. As new security patches become available, these are immediately applied while the database is still running and without any human intervention. So this prevents any delays, downtimes, and human error. Once your database is up and running, Oracle monitors the health of all the systems behind the scenes. Using machine learning algorithms, Oracle can detect and remediate any problems before they occur. And if any patches are required, these are also automatically applied. Again, all this occurs while your database is up and running. Autonomous also has various mechanisms which protects against failure. First, there are automatic backups. And then we protect against failures both within the scale-out clusters and other regions using DataGuard mentioned earlier. Should any failover happen, it will occur in such a way that your application will never notice. If you're in a situation where your Apex application suddenly requires more performance of the database, then you can easily scale up or scale down. 
This is, of course, one of the great benefits of the cloud. You don't have to purchase a big piece of hardware just to handle your peak workloads. You can choose when to scale up or let the database decide. So even that is automated for you. What this means is that you or your customer is only paying for the computing power that you really need. Now let's talk about the optimization of the database. Autonomous databases uses machine learning to optimize database workloads. The Oracle database always had planned optimizers to improve query and DML performance, but even so there was always work to be done for the DBA and application developer. Now this auto tuning goes even further because the database itself continuously manages things such as memory and parallelism. When you create an autonomous database, you can choose one of two types of workloads. There is autonomous data warehouse, which is optimized for analytical querying. For example, one of the optimizations here is to have all of the data stored in columnar format, and most of the internal memory is used for parallel joins and aggregations, because that's the most efficient way for analytical querying. And then there's autonomous transaction processing, or ATP. This is optimized for your daily operational applications. So here the data is stored in regular row format. And most of the internal memory is used for caching to avoid I.O. and to get faster response times that operational apps typically need. Most Apex applications will fit into this transaction processing category, but we know that there are some folks using Apex primarily for reporting. However, in this workshop, we're going to focus on ATP. I mentioned already that Autonomous comes bundled and pre-configured with various features that were previously only available as add-ons or database options. Most of these were not visible to the end user. But Autonomous comes bundled with some features that can add functionality that are actually visible in your application. For example, you can leverage advanced security features to mask sensitive data such as credit card information. You can add geographical functionality to your apps using Spatial. You can even add machine learning to train models to make predictions and then integrate them into your Apex applications. So let's summarize how Apex and Autonomous works together. Both are built on the principle of saving you time so you can focus on more interesting things, not maintenance. Apex allows you to build applications quickly and Autonomous Database has the same purpose by allowing Oracle to manage the infrastructure and database for you, which leaves you time for real innovation and application development. Once the app is delivered, you'll also save time that would normally have been spent maintaining the infrastructure and keeping the database running. Autonomous is also a great match if you're looking to use Apex for mission critical applications and if your applications need to be more performant. If availability or failover is important, or if you're looking for a higher standard of security, this can be a great match. Last but not least, we can extend Apex applications with some cool features that come bundled with Autonomous, such as spatial and machine learning. Thanks for attending our workshop and hope you enjoy these labs. On this screen, you'll see two Bitly links. One is for the lab guide, the other is for the free trial link. If you do not yet have an Oracle Cloud account, please sign up for a free trial account using the link on the screen. That link is specific to this webcast and you can also find the link in the chat. Please remember that to sign up for a cloud account, you will need a valid cell phone for SMS verification and please follow the prompts in the sign up process. For those that already have an Oracle Cloud free trial account, please go to the lab guide link and follow the instructions in the prerequisites, introduction, and lab one. This will walk you through how to create an ATP instance, create an Apex workspace, and create your first Apex application. For those that want to follow along, we will show you a quick demo on creating an ATP instance, creating your Apex workspace, and creating an app from a spreadsheet. If you don't want to follow along, that's okay. Please feel free to work at this at your own pace following the instructions in the lab guide. Just a reminder, post any questions in the Q&A and one of our panelists will answer. This is your Oracle Cloud dashboard. Click on the upper left-hand hamburger menu, select Autonomous Transaction Processing, and then click Create Autonomous Database. Make sure everything looks okay. You've picked Transaction Processing and you've got the always free configuration. Enter in your administrator password 
and confirm that password. Click Create Autonomous Database. Your ATP instance will display as a yellow box while it's provisioning, and it will change to green when it's fully provisioned. This should only take a few minutes. Once it's provisioned, you can access Apex two ways. First, through the Tools tab or through the Service Console. In this one, we're going to use Service Console. Select Development on the left-hand side and Oracle Apex. Enter the password you originally set up when you created the ATP instance and select Sign In to Administration. Click Create Workspace and then enter the database username and password that you found in the lab guide and click on Create Workspace. Once your workspace is created, you'll need to sign out as the administrator and sign in as the new user that you just created. So click that demo link at the very top of the page, enter your workspace name, username, and password for the user. Click on App Builder, select Create a New App. From a file, copy and paste, and then select Project and Tasks in the sample data set. Click Next. Give your table a name following the lab guide. In this exercise, we're going to call it Project underscore Tasks. Make sure everything looks OK, and click Load Data. You'll receive a success message that 73 rows were created. Click Create Application. And here are the app details where you can specify pages, settings, and features. We're going to select All and click Create Application. Once the app is created, you'll see all the details of your application, including all of the pages that were created. Click Run Application. Enter the same username and password that you used to sign into your Apex workspace. And after signing in, you'll see several cards or pages Feel free to take a look around the apps and pages and explore some of the features in your Apex application. The trial signup in Labs 1 and 2 should take about 20 minutes, so we'll see you back here in 20. Welcome back. During this lab, you'll create database objects using Quick SQL, view your database objects in SQL Developer Web and as a data model, and you'll create and add a new table. For those that would like to follow along, we'll show you a quick demo for this exercise. If you don't want to follow along, please feel free to work at this in your own pace following the instructions in the lab guide. Just a reminder to post any questions in the Q&A and one of our panelists will answer. Return to your Apex workspace and click the down arrow in the SQL Workshop tab and select SQL Scripts and you will get to this page. Click Quick SQL, copy and paste the SQL code from the lab guide and paste it into the left pane Quick SQL and click Generate SQL. On the right hand pane, you'll see the SQL that's generated. Click Settings to make a few changes. Change the object prefix on delete, primary keys, and date data type. Don't forget to select Audit Columns and Row Version Number and hit Save Changes. After clicking Save Changes, the SQL will be regenerated with the new settings. Don't forget to save the script.
and click Review and Run. Click Run on the toolbar. And run now. This page shows the results of your script. To view the database objects that were created, go to SQL Workshop Object Browser, select the table, and go to the Data tab. To view the database objects in SQL Developer Web, switch back to the Oracle Cloud ATP console in your browser and go to SQL Developer Web. Sign in with the admin and the password indicated in the lab guide. You originally created your database objects in the demo schema, so you'll need to enable SQL Developer Web Access for that schema. Copy and paste the following code into your worksheet from the lab guide. Click Run Script, and you should see a successful message in the script output. In your browser's address bar, change the URL by replacing admin with demo. This is the value that's passed in the parameter for the script. Then click Enter to go to the new URL. In the SQL Developer login page, enter the username and password in your lab guide Click Sign In, and the Worksheet tab is displayed by default. Under the left-hand Navigator tab, expand the HOL Projects, and in the right-hand Worksheet pane, copy and paste the following SQL query from your lab guide, and click Run Script to see the output. Now that we've shown you how to view your database objects in SQL Developer Web, We'll teach you how to create an entity relationship diagram using SQL Developer Web. Click on Data Modeler. On the left-hand navigator panel, click the HOL milestones and drag that to the center diagram window. Select HOL projects, HOL tasks, and HOL team members and drag that to the center diagram window as well. On the right-hand panel, you'll see the details of your diagram, and you can also use the controls to adjust the zoom level and layout. Note that the foreign keys are detected and drawn on the diagram. In the next step, you'll use SQL Developer Web to create a new table and add it to your existing relationship diagram. In the left-hand navigator menu, select Create Object, change the table name, to HOL underscore to do's. Click on the plus sign to add a new column and follow the lab guide to change the names, the data types, and any primary keys. Once you've added all the columns, click Create at the bottom of the page. This generates a SQL script. When you're ready, click Close. In the left-hand navigation, hit the Refresh button. You should see the new HOL to do's table. Right-click on the new table and click Edit. Add another column. And when you're done, click Apply. You should see the following output that indicates that new column was successfully added. Right-click on the HOL to-dos 
and click Edit. Add a new form key and follow the instructions in the lab guide. After all the changes are in, click Apply. You should see the following output that says the new foreign key was successfully added. Now click Columns to link to the new task table. After all the changes are in, click Apply. Click the foreign key. Follow the instructions in your lab guide to create a new foreign key. Once your changes are in, click apply. Click Close to dismiss this dialog. Drag the new HOL to do's table from the navigator to the diagram, and you'll notice that the new foreign keys are displayed from HOL to do's to HOL team members and HOL tasks. This lab should take you about 30 minutes, so we'll see you back here in 30. Hello again. During this lab, you'll create an app from a script, add an interactive grid page, and create records enhance that interactive grid, and add a calendar page. Please follow the instructions on the bit.ly link for lab three. For those that want to follow along, we'll show you a quick demo for the exercise. If you don't want to follow along, please feel free to work at this on your own pace following the instructions in the lab guide. Just a reminder, post any questions in the Q&A and one of our panelists will answer. In your Apex workspace, select SQL Workshop and SQL Scripts. Select the number under results and select the magnifying glass under view results. On the results page, click create app. And create application. Give your app a name. Select the appearance. And click Save Changes. Select all the pages that you want to see on your app. And then click Create Application. Once the app is created, you'll be taken to the App Builder page. Click Run Application. Set your username and password as it indicates in the lab guide and click Sign In. Once you've created the app, feel free to take a look around the new cards that are created. Now we're going to create an interactive grid. Go to back to App Builder, click Create Page, Form, and Editable Interactive Grid. You'll see a page number that is automatically identified next. Give it a page name and click Next. In the navigation menu dialog, you can select to create a new navigation menu entry. 
click Next. In the Report Source dialog, select the Table, click Create, and you'll see a success message in the upper right corner. Go ahead and run the app. A new editable interactive grid page is going to open. And since the HOL to dos table had no data, we can add rows here. Once you're done adding the last row, click Save. After your changes are saved, go back to Page Designer. Under the columns on the left-hand tree, go to Due Date. Scroll down. And under Format Mask, select the Day, Month, Year option. Under Team Member ID, change the type to Select List, and change the heading. Scroll down to List of Values, select Shared to component and HOL team members username. Unselect display extra values and then go to task ID. Select list for type. Select SQL query and copy and paste the SQL query from the lab guide. Validate your SQL and then click OK. You can also create a static list of values. So in status, change the type change the list of values to static values. Unselect display extra values and add in the values that you want to display here. Remember to put those in both places. When you're done, click OK. In Page Designer, click Save and Run. And here's a new interactive grid with the new columns. Select a date, a status, team member, and task ID. Go back to your app and create a page. Now we're going to create a calendar. So select calendar. We'll automatically generate the next page number for you. Add in a calendar name and click Next. You can create a new navigation menu entry for this page. and select the table view name. And the columns you want and click next. Change your display column 
and click Create. Save and run those changes and go back to your app and there's your new calendar. This exercise should take you about 30 minutes, so we'll see you back here in 30. Thanks again for attending our Low Code Development with Oracle Autonomous Database Workshop. I'd like to thank all the panelists that helped with today's session. On the screen, you'll see some links where you can find additional information, and please follow us on social media. Also, if you didn't finish all the labs today, that's okay. Please work on those at your own pace. Thank you again for attending, and we hope you have a great day. Thanks.